What up, what up, and welcome in to First Strike. We got a big UFC Apex weekend. The big one, fellas, the milestone, UFC Vegas 100. And a bunch of fun fights to talk about to get everybody getting cash in early. We're going to try to find these best bets early in the week where we expect these lines to start moving, starting to get a little more wide. We want to give you guys the opportunities to take advantage of them now. Speaking of now, I'm joined with the Apex Predators of the Octagon. I got MMA Jeff, Fanatical Jim, and Subhuman Gaucho with me tonight to give you guys our first looks here to cook these books. Jeff, how are we feeling? Excited as always. We got a midday card on Saturday. I think there's quite a few fights going on here. I think I think there was like 13 or so, depending on, like, we'll see what happens after the weigh-ins. But uh, yeah, looking forward to a mid-afternoon card. Mid-afternoon delight, Fanatical Jim. How's that fancy? Fancies me well. Um, yeah, I, I really like this card. Some really good spots. It is changing a bit. We had some some dropouts. Um, it is Wednesday that we're filming this, so had some dropouts earlier this week and even today. Um, so we're getting some changes, but uh, but it should be good. I think there's a really really good spots and a lot of good debuts that we're going to see. So um, looking forward to it. I know Subhuman Gaucho is looking forward to it. We were talking the other day about we're back in the baby cage, and that's where we make a lot of cash. Sub, are you all charged up and ready to attack? Oh, yeah, man. I got uh, got all the fixings for cocktail and ready to go. Um, <laughs> yeah, 100 baby cages, man. Uh, who would have thought? You know, I remember I remember these things kicking off during the, you know, the clown vid uh, a few years ago. And, uh, yeah, who, who would have thought we'd be here now, man? We always we, – we tend to do our best work here, so uh, it'll be fun. And we got a nice uh, pay-per-view to follow it up uh, next weekend. So, hell, yeah. I'll tell you, fast-tracking, we were talking the other day. Uh, I think we've got a – We've got a 4 a.m. or a 3 a.m. or coming up here in just a couple of weeks as well. So we'll have to figure out how we handle that. But you know how we'll handle this UFC event on Saturday. We'll be together early pre-fights to give you guys breakdowns, best bet analysis, prelim fights, parlays. We're going to give you guys a whole bunch of goods to get the card started. And then we will dig in and live bet um, and uh, react together on screen. But it's time to get to work, boys. Let's get the fingers Let's you know crack these knuckles. Let's get ready to crack these bookies in the skull. Jeff's gonna open us up. He's gonna go right after it. He's got a Radke Samuelsberger opportunity for this first fight of first strike tonight. And I'm excited to hear this breakdown, Jeff. Take it away. Where are we getting paid? I gotta say, this should be a pretty decent fight with some exciting moments sprinkled in there. Uh, I'm looking forward to it personally. You got Smellsberger who's coming in here with a pretty significant height and reach advantage. Um, he's 49th ranked overall. Uh, he's coming in here, though, with a mediocre 5-5 five and five UFC record. Uh, eight of his pro fights ended up going 4-4 four and four to decision, which shows me he doesn't show the judges enough to get these wins when it does go to decision. His path to victory is generally standing and banging. Um, he's lost his last three fights, which is obviously less than impressive. Uh, he's coming also coming in here uh, fresh off an elbow surgery. I believe it was back in March, which... You know, given the fact that he's lost his last three fights and the elbow surgery does not excite me very much for uh, for Smellsberger in this one. But who knows? Maybe he needed the injury or the uh, surgery to get himself back on track. Uh, we shall see. You got Radke on the other end of things. You know, he's on his third UFC fight. He came in uh, two and zero, oh, two wins in a row, and then he fought Protez, which I I'm going to cut him a little slack on the Protez fight, given the fact that Protez, in my opinion, is a much better fighter. Uh, he's more skilled. He's more uh, more well rounded, and he's fighting on the main card here. So uh, I'm going to cut Radke a little bit of slack there, but he does have some decent power with some good grappling. Uh, he likes to shoot some submission attempts if he gets you down to the ground. Uh, Smellsberger, if this if he allows this one to go to the mat, I personally think he's going to be in some trouble. Uh, Radke typically generates some power while he's on his feet to get some uh, give him th that opportunity to get those takedowns. And uh, again, I think. Uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna probably get in there close and uh, pop him a couple of times and then shoot for the takedowns. Um, I see Radke winning the stand up battles here and uh, shooting some takedowns and then uh, impressing the judges if it even gets there. Um, you know, I could also see Radke with a, a sneaky finish late in the late in the rounds or late in the fight. Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna roll with Radke uh, third round or decision at plus one thirty. Uh, I snagged that number over at DraftKings. 
So I'm going to bring us into speaking of Prates, sub bringing us to the main event of the evening. We've got Magni versus Prates. Sub, what are you feeling in this one? All right. So, uh, yeah, appreciate that, Jeff. Um, yeah, man, I like that pick, too. You know, I already took some fights to go the distance there. And I, I do like some Chuck Buffalo, so you'll likely find me ride with you. But until then, let's get in this main event here. We've got uh, Neil Magni, the Haitian sensation. And uh, my guy, Carlos, the Nightmare Pradas. Now, this line has uh, really gotten blown out. Carlos Prados, a huge favorite. Now, he opened up a big favorite, but uh, it is it is absolutely massive now. Not entirely surprised. This guy's got a ton of aura. I was betting on him just a matter of months ago. And he's been KOing absolutely everybody. Uh, nine straight fights. He has gotten a KO in rounds one or two. Really impressive the run that he's been on. You know, this is a fighter that started out kind of win one, lose one earlier in his career. He's 20 and six now. And obviously in good form. But he's only had three fights in this uh, UFC organization. So this is kind of where he's starting to get up into the these uh, these ranked opponents. Neil Magny, on the other hand, he's been around forever. Um, this guy has a total of 42 fights. Amazingly, 33 in the UFC. He has not been in very good form, just two and three in his last five. And you have to give Pradas a huge edge here, no doubt about it. But the big question for me is he going to get him out of there in rounds one and two? I think it's indeed plausible. You know, it's a minus 125. It's really not the worst price. But for me, I do think that Magni can get out of there. Or, or pardon me, he can get out of round one at any rate. Um, you know, Magni, he's, he's got some real weaknesses, but you can't really call the guy chinny. Um, fragile in some regards, you know, he has real problems taking leg kicks, and that's going to be a problem for him here. Pradas is a good leg kicker. His other big downside is his ability to be grappled and be subbed, especially early in fights. He's only got two KO losses in round one. Both of them were big insta bonks. But when you look at this from an X's and O's perspective and you just watch the tape back, you know, Pradas, it's it's kind of deceiving that he has all these round one and round two finishes lately because he's kind of a slow starter in, in a way. He, it's not like this guy is shot out of a cannon. He doesn't mind fighting off the back foot. He's kind of gathering information for most of that round one. And Magni is good at pressuring people and smothering them. He's uh, deceivingly strong in the clinch. And while Pradas has a good tie clinch, you know, he can mix in the elbows and knees very well. He's not very good at the over-under. I think Magni can probably rack up a little bit of time on the cage and just slow this fight down for at least a round. And Pradas, in the meantime, I don't think he's going to rush any more than usual now that he's stepping up to a five-round main event. He's going to want to leave some in the tank in that outside chance that it does go go into those championship rounds, say, although I, I do think Pradas probably gets him out of there and say two or three. But at any rate, Carlos Pradas to win and fight to start round two gets you a minus 125. I really like that. Leaves you four rounds for him to do it. And even if it goes to the judge's scorecards and he gets his hand raised, gives you a lot of win equity there on a guy that's getting down around minus 800. All that said, let's move on to this next one. We've got, uh, I'm excited for this fight too. I have a wager on this one, so I'm excited to see uh, the breakdown. We've got Treshawn Gore and Anton Tricali. Mike's breaking this one down. Where are we going, Mike? All right, thanks, Sub. Fired up for this one here. Starting the card off with a potential live dog in Tricoli. Uh, But I don't know if I can entirely pull that trigger. Treshawn Gore, Tricoli battle here to kick this card off. And I'm going to tell you what. Skip all the breakdown, all the analysis. Gore's on fraud alert. You heard it. You heard it here first. Remember where you heard it when three fights from now, everyone's like, who is this piece of garbage? And here's the deal. Yeah, he's three and two his last five fights. He's coming off a monster layoff. He's been an injury-prone buttercup. Got surgery after surgery. He was scheduled just a couple of years ago to fight Bo Nickel. And, you know, something came up. So, you know, they go to reschedule it. He's like, oh, no, I can't reschedule it. Um, I got to fight sooner than when you're trying to put this fight out there. And then what's he do after that? 
He goes in a layoff. So I don't know what kind of games he was playing out there other than he just must like to represent the fact that he fights in the UFC. Um, yeah, he's definitely going to be a come forward wrestler. Um, but I just don't. Yeah, he subs for him. That's fine. But this is a guy off of a layoff and uh, injury factors as well. The flip side, you look at Tricole, and certainly this line shouldn't be as wide as it is. Sub, you know, we've got a spot here, you know, 12 and four in his fighting career. This guy had a layoff as well. It was a USADA layoff out there. He caught, he got caught with the dirty needle. That being said, though, what's he do? He wants to fight. He takes a short notice fight on Shara Bullet guy that we just got very familiar with our last go round out there. You know, he flies across the world. He takes it on short notice against a full camp in bullet. And, uh, you know, he's got to deal with the weight cut. We talked about this during the live show. Uh, these guys that come in short notice, they don't have the money to necessarily put up a full camp and properly climatize, uh, gas is out in that fight out there. And, uh, and he takes a beating, he takes his lump. But he's getting back up and he's getting ready to go. And this is a big dude. I was watching some tape on this guy. Give him the full camp. He's got the size advantage. He's got the reach advantage. But the way that I got to play this one here is I'm going to go with a little over action. The over two and a half rounds. I expect that we find a judge's scorecard in this thing. And uh, ultimately, you know, just look at the simple facts that it's the first fight of the card. You know, yeah, we tend to see that a lot more decisions popping off across these cards the last couple of weeks as well. And I'm going to look at this thing and think, well, he just came off a knockout, did Tricoli. So I always like to say that they take a round to kind of get their feet back underneath them. Past that round, we got another guy out there on the other side here in Gore that hasn't fought in over two years. He's going to probably take a round or so to try to knock that ring rust off. And that puts us down to two rounds of this fight. And the thing I think goes the distance. I think, again, we've got the live dog putting Gore on exposure. But I'm going to just take the over two and a half rounds in this fight. It's a nice plus 118 tag. Fight to go the distance is plus 140. Not mad at that one either, but um, we might see something happen where somebody does gas out at the end of this thing here, just given the nature of the layoffs. But I like the dog in the spot. I like the over two and a half rounds. And I like that we got Fanatical Jim rocking with us here with first strike. He's going to give us a battle between Pinero and Robertson. And I'm fired up. I got a couple of thoughts on this one as well. I can't wait to hear Jim break it down. And uh, Jim, take it away. Tell us. What's our path to victory in this big ladies showdown? Well, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. You know, this is a, a pretty good fight between Luana Pinero and Jillian Robertson. Um, you look at Luana Pinero, she has fought six times in the UFC. She's four and two. She rattled off four straight victories when she came in, and her past two have been losses. Uh, she lost to Amanda Rebus by knockout in round three. She lost to Angela Hill, who is primarily a striker, but Angela Hill subbed her in round two. Quite frankly, Luana Pinero is is a kind of a loopy striker. She likes to pressure. She has decent power. She has zero sub game. She'll attempt a couple of takedowns and do nothing with them. I'm just not really impressed with Luana Pinero. I think um, the Michelle Waterson Gomez fight really exposed her, and I think she should have lost that fight. But you know, if she can't get what she's going for, which is that pressure fighting style and and trying to aim for your head and get you out of there, she she struggles mightily. Well, she's versing someone who is going to test that in Jillian Robertson. Jillian Robertson's past five fights have been extremely impressive. I mean, she fraud checks Maria Agapova. She fraud checks Pierre Rodriguez. She gets, she subs them both. Uh, she loses a tap of the Ricci and tap of the Ricci is a very strong girl. And you, you, she just couldn't get her down enough to do enough damage to her. And she ends up losing the fight, but then she comes back. She knocks out Polly, Pollyanna Viana. And I think her most dominating performance was Michelle Waterson Gomez's retirement fight. She was doing everything. She was taking her down. She was throwing strikes. She was throwing elbows. She had ground and pound. She was trying for subs. I mean, that was her most impressive performance that she's coming off of. Um, and now she's versing Luana Pinheiro. Luana Pinheiro has, has issues with cardio. When she gets taken down, she cannot get back up. And you're versing somebody who will take you down. I mean, Jill, Jillian Robertson hasn't seen a takedown she doesn't like. She's going to try to she's gonna get you down. She's going to get her down. Um, and it's only a matter of time before she gets Luana Pinero out of there and out of the UFC, because I think this is Pinero's last, last fight here if she loses, in my opinion. So my official pick here will be Jillian Robertson money line and fight to start round two. And that's a minus 123 right now on FanDuel. Um, I just think that, you know, most of Jillian Robertson's finishes have been in the second round or the third round. And I think Luana Pinero could probably survive round one. She's going to try to pressure. She'll, she has enough cardio to be able to sustain on the ground if it gets there, you know, two and a half, three minutes in, into the first round. 
she should be able to sustain herself. But eventually that cardio is in a drain. You're going to see Pinheiro mouth open. Jillian Robertson can take her down as many times as she wants and do whatever she wants. I think the other thing I play in here, this is not an official pick, but it's something I already bet. You can find it some FanDuel as well. It's Jillian Robertson to win by knockout in rounds two or rounds three at plus 1,200. That's a monster number. Jillian Robertson has won by knockout in multiple times via ground and pound. In, and in rounds two and rounds three. I mean, hell, I think she beat Priscilla Cachoeira in round one, if I'm not mistaken, or somebody else in round one by knockout. But um, I'm looking at round two and round three for the same reasoning. The other reason here is that I look at the rule changes with the 12-6 elbows. I, I just envision her either half guard or a guard just, just raining them down on Pinheiro. And Pinheiro is not going to be able to do anything about it. And you can just see her, the ref's just, just jumping in and stopping it. And then all of a sudden, we just hit 12 uh, plus 1,200. Julian Robertson's been talking about the 12 6 elbows. She's excited about the rule changes. To me, this is just aligning to, to just a great number that they're giving you on it. Um, so I'm going to take that, not official, but I will give it out here as a plus 1200 rounds, two rounds, three. But again, official pick here is Julian Robertson all the way and fight to start round two at minus 123. So with that, Mike, let's go with the, the recap and the breakdown of all four fights. Great breakdown, Jim. Love the use of the 12-6 elbow. I can't wait to see more of those attacks. We saw one last week. We saw our first 12-6. Caught everybody by surprise. Um, but there should be no surprise here. The fellas are ready to do what we do out there. You guys can see the side. We've got Jeff starting us off with Radke winning in the third round or a decision at a nice plus 130 tag. Frates in winning the fight and round two to start from our guy Sub Club. We got a little Tricoli over two and a half rounds at plus 118 and fanatical Jim, the man that gasses the books on a regular basis when it comes to the combat weekend, going with a little Jillian Robertson win and fight to start round two at minus 123. Put that in the parlay. The first strike parlay is going to pay out just under 15 and a half to one. A little plus 1550 action for you guys that are Looking to get into it, and you know we'll be back on Saturday ready to attack, talking about all the fights, all the cards, all the gambling spots that we've identified as how we want to get paid with that one here. So always a pleasure, boys. Thank you for joining us tonight. We got MMA Jeff, Subhuman Gaucho, Fanatical Jim, and behalf of all of the Sports Money Network, thank you guys for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and catch us on Saturday. We cooked them books real nice last weekend, and we plan to do it again this one here. Thank you guys for checking us out. We'll see you soon.